So who am I? I'm a security researcher. I present about some flaws and issues about Samsung Pay two years ago. Probably you remember that. Um, they still vulnerability. So um, also I present last year about exploiting my stride information data with Bluetooth audio. And I probably co-founder a woman in tech fund, which basically empower women to go to this kind of conference, security and technological. We're going to talk about in this tag how to spend money from our people. So everything about this tag is illegal. Just, uh, just to let you know. Basically, how we can move a transaction from one place to another, that's the point. It could be a relay, it could be a replay. And this example, I'm making a, a small relay locally with a Raspberry Pi, moving a Samsung Pay transaction from the mobile device to a, another device which basically behaves as point, uh, POS. So the idea of this tag is going to relate, everything related to this kind of um, environment. A little bit about what is NFC, we're going to talk about introduction, uh, the process of the MUV, which basically is how the transaction goes through. Uh, fraud vectors from the banks, previous words from uh, Peter Fillmore and Michael Roland, NFC emulations, of course, replay or relay attacks, and also another topic that it's very interesting, how to extract chips data with NFC, which is not documented at all. Relay for replay attacks, a new attack, which basically is a smart relay attack. And how this kind of replay or relay attacks will affect new technology to come. So basically, a NFC technology is a protocol that you need to get closer to another device to start the communication. And the NFC process is very straightforward. You need to approach the smart card to a terminal, and the terminal is going to give the power to the, to the smart card to boot up and start the communication. Basically, NFC is in the passive frequency, which basically is 13.56 MHz. It's passive mode technology, which means that you need to approach to the, to the terminal to boot up the, the car. It's well implemented in IoT, and we're using the ISO 14443A for this communication. Even when we have a lot of technology using NFC, we're going to be focused just in bank wallets. That's what I mentioned before. It's like the terminal started communication with the car all the time. People get confused a little bit about this. They thought that when they approach the car to the terminal, you start the communication, but that's not true. The first command comes from the terminal because it's waiting for the, for the small car. A little bit of what is a transaction, just to have in mind, is like the terminal starts sending commands to the small car, and the small car is going to answer back. It's like when you're in the shell and you're typing comments, even when you type the right or wrong comment, you are going to get an answer back. It's the same thing with the smart cards. In this, in this case, the terminal uh, sends a command on the, on the uh, in this case, it's a Fibit Ionic smartwatch, which answers back. With four commands, we can have a transaction ready to go. So what is the MFU you flow for these kind of transactions? Uh, the terminal detects the card, and it boots up, it detects the applications. Could it be some MasterCard or any kind of card that you're using? You get the data processing restrictions, some actions in the terminal. But after everything of this, the transaction has to be finished. It could be declined or it could be accepted, but it has to be finished. One of the interesting things about NFC is that they are implementing tokenization process. The tokenization process basically is when you have a physical card and you add to the Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, or Google Pay technology, when you add your physical information to these uh, technologies, they are going to generate virtual credit cards, which basically is if someone intercepts this tokenization of this virtual credit card, they can use it just for one time. So it's more secure, and that's the way it works. So when you approach, for example, let's say Google Pay to a terminal to make a payment, and the, and the payment network, we have another third, uh, third company, which I call token service provider, which basically validates the token of the virtual credit card and relates to the physical number and that sends to the bank associated with. And after that, the bank is going to decide if the transaction is going to be declined or is going to be accepted. So we have two technologies for uh, mobile devices. We have Secure Element for Samsung Pay, uh, Apple Pay, and we have host card emulation for um, Google Pay. And we're going to have some difference between them. So basically, Secure Element is uh, developed for more than 20 years. 
is a smart card restricted access and cell encryption. Basically what it does is like, when you're making a transaction, the terminal sends a challenge to the secure element, and the secure element mathematically calculates it and sends back the cryptogram application transaction counter. On the other side, we have the host card emulation, which implements Google, Google Pay. It's a new version of Android Pay. We have limited use keys, tokenization process, cloud cryptogram, and transaction risk analysis. Basically what it does, for example, when you are your card to Google Pay, uh, Google Pay, when validates a card, it downloads four or five tokens, which basically are virtual credit cards. So you can start making payments, and when they finish that pile, it downloads another five or four tokens. So the fraud vector and the NFC. We need to know that, for example, in the United States, all this research is about the United States. It could apply to uh, other countries, but it's based on tokenization in the United States. We have low limits. Basically, uh, in the United States, we have the limit of $50 for NFC transaction, when you don't have to validate with PIN or signature or anything like that. But if you think about it, we can grab $50 in the United States and move that $50 to South America, for example. And that $50 is going to be worth it in the North country, let's say. We don't have uh, additional car, car hold verification. And um, for the brand perspective, the fraud is considered accepted risk. And of course, we have NFC and many, many different IoT devices, which is going to be a problem. Attack is the wild. We noticed that someone, some guy was in the subway, which a mobile POS trying to uh, get close to people and try to make transactions offline. And it was documented in 2015. So the type of tax is start, is start um, well, I saw this one in close in the United States, basically. It could be happening in other states, in other countries, let's say. Some previous work about uh, NFC. Uh, Dr. Michael Rowland present about how to make replay attacks in MasterCard in 2013. Basically, what he found was that using the unique number forced to zero, he reduced the possibility to guess or to have a better approach for the CVC. Um, for example, in these four transactions, three of them were successful and yet one were failed. Also, in 2015, Peter Fillmore presented in Black Hat about how he, how he was able to move the turn the max try bit on and the AAP bytes inside of the APDU command. To move them, what he does basically was that um, when you have a level security on the NFC, when you reduce this uh, bit, you tell the terminal to load the security in the transaction just to validate that smart drive information. About That one was about uh, solar side. and the hardware side, uh, Mr. Lee presented an NFC hacking, the easy way, and DEFCON 20, about how he can make 200 phones make a bridge between the smart card and the terminal. That was very interesting. Because, for example, you put a cell phone close to a smart card and another cell phone close to a terminal, and they can communicate using the Wi-Fi connection. For example, when they, one of the terminal, the terminal send a command to the phone, and the phone sent by Wi-Fi to another phone, and the phone sent to the smart card, it, they were making a bridge with the transaction go back and forth between both of them. Um, one of the limitations was the lag depending on the network, but also um, some of the system that they were implementing is no more available anymore. Also in DEFCON 25th, um, some security guys, person for Rock Team, present these two boards, which were client and server, which basically is the same idea using two devices, one close to the smart card and another one close to the terminal, and they start sending comments or making the bridge between both of them. But the most important thing about this design was the SDR channel. Basically, the SDR channel, what it does is uh, you add basically in a specific channel to make the relay attack. So you are avoiding the, the delays in the communication, which basically is very important for the NFC communication. And we are going to talk a little bit more about that. But this project is a private project, private prototype, and it's a special design. When I notice, uh, this one is a uh, 2.4 GHz SDR, which basically is for distance, but not to go in through the walls, let's say, for example. So let's talk a little bit about NFC emulation. NFC emulation is part of the NFC. Basically, NFC is divided in three sections. We have read, reader and writer, we have peer-to-peer -peer communication, and we have emulation. Emulation basically is when you have a device that is going to act 
well, it's going to behave as a smart card. For example, I have this uh, NFC reader, and when I turn it on, uh, when I program it, I can tell it that instead of uh, running as NFC reader, uh, I'm going to, it's going to run an NFC emulator. So basically, it's a ACR-122 based on the PM532, which basically I'm going to implement it with different devices we support this uh, NFC reader. It's an open source uh, chip, let's say in that way, for an NHP company that you can handle it with different commands to do whatever you want to do with it. For example, to initialize this uh, device as emulator, you need to send, send it some kind of commands. I call native commands or IPD commands. The idea is, for example, when you send these commands, you are telling the reader that it's going to behave in that way. Of course, there are different kind of commands, and I was start researching about them, how to send them to the to the NFC reader. But I found that Adam Lurier present already has a GitHub with all the commands that I need to make the emulation process, which is pretty cool. Even he has a Python script that put the emulation mode automatically to this reader. So I was it was very I was very lucky to find this before my research. So let's talk a little bit about the replay attacks. Basically, replay attack is is when you can you can get a transaction or intercept a transaction, and this transaction can go through in the terminal. Let's say, for example, that you are using uh, Google Pay to make a transaction. Well, let's say, for example, I am I'm asking you, can you show me how Google Pay works? And you basically take out your phone and start uh, open your application and start uh, making the transaction, but you're really not making the transaction, but you are using a token. And that token is still alive after you close the application. So I can intercept that token and use it later in another location. So uh, I sent this flow to Google Pay this year. Basically, they respond, they accept it, and they assign the priority one, seventy two, uh, but it not qualify for the award. So uh, after that, uh, they told me that it won't fix it because it was intended behavior. What that means exactly? Intended behavior means that the payment systems works in that way. I mean, that kind of flexibility in the system could lead to make vulnerabilities in the payments. And it's already public report about it. So basically, what I'm going to do here, I have a pocket chip connected to the ACR-122. I have a Google, Google Pay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the NFC reader in uh, and, and first it's going to be a reader mode, which basically is going to read the token for Google Pay. So I'm going to intercept the token. I got the token, and after that, the same, the same code is going to turn this ACR-122 into emulation mode to make the replay attack. So basically I'm using the square to make a transaction, and now it's validating the transaction and the transaction goes through. So I got a notification in, in Google Pay that I make a transaction with Google Pay by basically I'm using another device to make the transaction, which is uh, this one, one dollar, one cent. So the question here is, people tell me, but we're talking about $50. What does it, what is the problem exactly? The problem is that you on, you not only are, are um, restricted to get, get one token. That's the main problem. The problem is that you can get more tokens than that. So for example, I can make it a, um, a program that is start intercepting tokens from Google Pay. I mean, these tokens are going to be alive for about, I don't know, 24 hours, who say that? 24 hours approximately. So every token is different. You can see um, the IDs of the tokens. So let's say, for example, if I do this kind of attack, I can get these tokens and make uh, replay attacks for $50 in each one. This NFT Cup project could be with different kind of hardware. Um, this one is a PN, PM532 different one than the ECR-122 that I show you, using an Arduino. Even you can use an external antenna to do that. This one is a Raspberry Pi connected to a $5 PM532 that could do the same thing. 
I mean, it depends on the malicious user how to interact with it. But I, I decided to make this kind of project. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero with ACR122. It's a LiPo, 3.7 volts, and a zero LiPo booster, which basically what it does is move the 3.7 volts to 5 volts. Basically, it's this kind of project. So we have a portable device. We have a reader and emulator simultaneously. We have Wi-Fi connectivity, and it's customizable. So let's try to play demo making a transaction. Basically, I have a Google Pay, and I'm going to uh, run it as reader initially. And I'm going to intercept the token of uh, Google Pay. After I intercept the token, I'm going to try to make a transaction using using the same device. It's pretty cool, huh? Probably able to design a, a, a better version of it. But basically, you need to think about these kind of tokens that are pre-validated using the cloud cryptograms. That's why they can go through these kind of transactions. So after I got the transaction, I got the notification in Google Pay that I'm making a transaction with Google Pay but I was using NFC copy project. So the relay attacks, basically relay attacks a more difficult, more difficult feature, but um, we have the same, the same idea. We need two devices, that is one is close to uh, the smart card and another one is close to the terminal, a point of cell system. The idea is to have a fast uh, device that could do that uh, very quickly if we think about the scenario, we have these centimeters in real world, that how you can make a transaction, but the idea is how we can expand these 10 centimeters to a hundred centimeters or kilometers. We have some inconvenience, we have some delays and timeouts in the NFC protocol, which basically each transaction has to be done in 500 milliseconds. But there is no restriction in the terminals to tell them that they need to stop the transaction if it takes longer. What that means is like, for example, I can make transactions for five or 4.5 seconds without any problems. So this gives us chance to make relay attacks to the NFC uh, protocol. So I designed this project I call Sentinelas, which basically is a Raspberry Pi with all the, the same, the same uh, hardware from the NF copy project, but I had the CC1101 transceiver what it does basically, or what, why don't you choose the 2.4 gigahertz transceiver? Because this one is cheaper and it has different frequencies that I can work with it. We have low frequencies if I want to go through the walls or high, high frequencies if I want distance for the relay. Also we have different modulations. I'm using the default GFSK and it's very cheap, $5 anyway. So basically, it's very straightforward connection. You can connect directly to the uh, SPI protocol and the Raspberry Pi GPU, and you have two dependencies to uh, turn on. Uh, we design a small board so you can plug in, in the top of the GPU and connect the CC1101. Another limitation in the library of this uh, prototype is that you can only send 60 bytes per packet. So for example, if we have a APDU with 200 on length, we need to make chunks of this command. The idea of this is that uh, the another node needs to know how many chunks are in the packet. And after it receives all the, all the chunks, it can um, run the command in the terminal or in the um, NFC reader. So basically we have uh, two readers and emulators. We have Wi-Fi connectivity, customizable, cheap, and SDR support. So basically this phone is acting as uh, a POS terminal. I'm going to run the two programs using Python script. And you notice I already got the transaction. So you're going to see where it's located another, the another um, device. The idea of this project is like how we can make something very cheap and many people can, can do it basically to show how um, the NFC security flaws are there. but. Many people think that we need expensive hardware, but it's not true. So basically, this is where I have the NOR device, and here is the, the uh, NFC card. 
What about LoRa? We have uh, this technology that is coming up um, with a lot of distance. I was thinking about how make it relay with LoRa. So basically, I have this device using a Heltec board, which basically you have LoRa, Bluetooth, and another stuff inside the board. And this is the device, and I am on the other side of the building. So basically, you will see how I got in the transaction, implementing the same idea using a phone as mobile, mobile panel system. And where is another uh, device located? So the idea of this is that you can use different kind of technology to make this type of attacks. Another idea was how we can extract data from chip and pin cards using NFC. Sounds kind of strange, but if you think about it, these two technologies share the same APD layer. The idea, for example, if I send a comment to the contactless card, if I send the same comment to the contact card, it's going to answer somehow wrong or right, but we're going to have an answer. So we can handle the tags in the middle of the communication. We can extract data using the same kind of comments. So for this uh, approach, instead of using the ACR in one side, I implement the USB smart card reader, basically using the same and other devices to make the relay. Also, uh, I changed the protocol, which basically, instead of bytes or blocks and bytes, I mean using bytes in this case, is T0 instead of T1. So let's show you a demo. So basically, I have a a smart card reader connects to the Raspberry Pi using the, AC, the SDR, the same one, and I have another device with the same device. This uh, cell phone is acting as POS, so it's going to send the commands through the SDR, and the SDR is going to connect to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi is going to get the data from the, from the card. So I'm getting the data from the chip and pin card using NFC connection. Please don't use my numbers. No, it's already spider, so. So let's talk a little bit about relay for replay. Relay for replay, I call it a smart, a smart relay, a smart relay. So the idea of this smart relay is how we can attack this kind of transaction when they are for secure elements. They call the more secure um, transactions and the mobile devices. So let's understand a little bit what happens here. In the first line, the terminal asks you what kind of Technology is implementing. Um, the uh, Fitbit Ionic said, I'm using a Visa card. And the PO said, select the Visa card to see what kind of information it has. And after that, the PO sent the, ch the challenge. And the Fitbit responds with a cryptogram on the transaction, um, application transaction counter. And when it validates it, when it validates the cryptogram and the application transaction counter, the terminal sent to update the application transaction counter for the next time. So what happened if I intercept a transaction from the secure element and I save it and I try to replay it? Basically, when I'm replaying it, the terminal is going to send me the challenge. And if I send the safe crypto, crypto and I already saved my, in my previous device, the POS is going to decline the transaction because it's not going to match. So let's think about it a little bit. When you add your card to the secure element, basically all the, all the fields are going to be static for almost all the time. The only thing that is changing basically is the application transaction counter and the cryptogram. So if I can save a previous transaction and I make a relay, the only 20 bytes I need to send back and forth are the application transaction counter and the cryptogram. So I'm saving a lot of time in the relay attack. Let's say, for example, I have this safe previous transaction. And the only thing that I'm waiting for it is the application transaction counter and the cryptogram. So when the point of service system asks me what kind of card you have, the first computer answers back because I already saved it. And um, the POS. When until the POS send the challenge, and that moment is when the first computer connects to the second computer, which is connected to the mobile device, and ask for the cryptogram or the challenge in this case, 
and this device is going to answer back, and that challenge goes back to the MPO, the MPOS or the POS. And after that, um, you can have a, a lot of time to handle the comments. On this case, the relay attack. So you can improve the relay attack for about two or three seconds, which is pretty pretty cool. And also, this one gives you that you can have more distance for the relay attack. So basically, uh, I have a previous safe previous say transaction from the smartwatch, which is Fitbit Ionic. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to inter uh, send the challenge or get the challenge for the Fitbit Ionic. And it's going to send back the challenge, which basically in the middle there, and the transaction is approved. So the idea basically is that if you make a relay using a previous safe transaction, you can improve a lot your relay attacks. I mean, the malicious users. Yeah, after all, you can use this kind of technique to get a transaction. The guy is there, and there you go. Simplest way to do it, but it's very, very. So, new technology. Basically, in the new technology, we have the smart cards. And they are implementing NFC to get into the cards or to turn on the cards, so basically to do many things inside of the card. And we analyze the 3020 board, which basically is in the card. They are implementing uh, NFC too. The question here is, if this kind of technology is going to be, is going to have this kind of flaws? Because even when we have some security measures inside of the NFC protocol, like timestamp formats and things like that, we are not implemented at all. So new attack vectors. What about NFC and the web browsers? If you think about it, we don't have any library or support for the NFC and web browsers because it's very difficult. The idea of this library, Web USB, is to be able to connect a NFC reader like this to the USB of the computer and you can control it using the web browser. But many people is approaching incorrectly to solve this problem. For example, in the in Chrome, we have a experimental web platform features that you can enable to um, basically turn on the USB capability to connect directly from the Chrome to the um, USB devices. But many people, I start connecting, for example, this device directly to the uh, computer and I start trying to interact with it using the web browser. But it's very difficult because we don't have the manuals, we don't have all the information inside of the of the Chrome, how, is, how it handles us. But what this library has is that you can control Arduinos from the uh, web browser. That means I'm thinking about it. If I can control Arduinos, I can connect a board to Arduino for NFC, and I can do all the stuff for NFC technology. It's very straightforward. You have a basically HTML file with a serial, which basically is how you're going to connect to the, to the device. And you tell which kind of products you are going to be allowed to connect to it. In this case, Arduinos. Why Arduinos? Basically, some Arduinos because you can have full control of the USB stack. That's the idea. In the Arduino site, you have a, a serial and a they call a shell a little bit, like a shell where you can send comments from the web browser, and the uh, Arduino is going to run that kind of code. So the idea, for example, is. Uh, I have connected an Arduino, and I'm, it's going to act as a card. So basically, I'm sending a command from the web browser to the USB, and it's going to act as to make kind of a transaction with it. Some of the countermeasures that we can use for this type of attacks is a distance boundary protocols. These kind of protocols it's very difficult to implement, even in mobile devices, because the mobile device can run many different applications that could, um, could take a lot of time, and it's going to be difficult to see what's the time in between uh, the transaction. But also we have timestamp formats inside of the NFC protocol that could be applicable, but it's very difficult to do it also. Also another thing is that we can use an encryption in the NFC protocol that we are not implemented. Even um, 
if we can use, for example, the Felica NFC technology, that will be better because the Felica by default is encrypted. So some conclusion of this stack, uh, an attacker doesn't need any specialized hardware to make uh, fraudulent transactions. Even a mobile device could be used to intercept a transaction and to um, notice about, about the transaction and after that replay it. Also, if the companies keep doing this kind of stuff like in their products and designing, we are going to have the same flaws in the future. Please, do you have any questions? Yes. The question was, are there any efforts being made um, in terms of reading NFC cards from a longer distance? Yes, uh, in the Arsenal this year, and Black Hat, they present a device that basically is a big antenna um, connected to a NFC reader that it was running around 20 centimeters. Uh, but they are, they are different projects out there. They are working on them. Thanks. Yes. Another question? Questions off stage then. Okay. Thank you very much, Salvador. Thank you. Thank you.